Last time on Dragon Ball Daima, Vegeta, Piccolo, and Kibito were about to head to the Demon Realm in Shin's old ship that Bulma repaired, but the ship malfunctioned upon launching and came back down. Meanwhile, in the Demon Realm, Goku and Glorio had a bit of a spar, and their mission now is to eventually get to the location of Tamagami 3 and face off against Tamagami 3, the Ball God, one of three guardians of the demonic Dragon Balls of the Daimakai. We are seven episodes in, and the time has come for this show to pick up the pace. Without question, the biggest complaint about Dragon Ball Daima so far from multiple different communities has been the pacing. It feels like we should have already gotten here a while ago. It feels like they focused a bit too much on lore dumps and things like that instead of progressing the plot forward. And at first, I was digging the lore dumps because I love lore. I love Toriyama's lore. I love learning about the demon realm. But... At the same time, it feels like with episodes 5, 6, and 7, those three were kind of just stuck in this, you know, hamster wheel. Now, by the end of this episode, the good news is that by the end of this episode, things actually got to a new place. We're actually now finally at a new area, a new battle. Things are picking up, but it's like, dude... You could have, at least in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like they could have taken these three episodes and truncated them, shaved a little bit around, and made it just an overall quicker experience. Dragon Ball Daima is not a long show. It's basically a miniseries. It will not be even as long as GT. It's ending around March or shortly before then. So I feel like, and my concern is that they're going to, sort of backload the series and a lot of the big fights that could have been more epic if they took their time are going to get rushed. Now, I'm not saying that's definitely going to happen. It's just my concern. I haven't seen these episodes. I know some things that happen in them, but I don't know how long the fights are and there's still a lot more that needs to be done in the series. Now, the reason as to why the episode's called Collar is because there's a pesky problem they have to fix first involving Pansy's Collar before they actually are able to confront Tamagami 3 and have the battle for the Dragon Ball. There were two different things going on in this episode. I guess you could say it's like an A plot and a B plot. On one hand, we have the Collar situation going on in the Demon Realm where the crew of Goku, Shin, Glorio, and Pansy are being interrupted on their quest by Goma's military police as we discover something new about the Collars. I'm going to go into more detail about this entire idea in the breakdown, like where Toriyama sort of got this idea from with the collar, but it's also not only something that was foreshadowed in previous episodes about the significance of the collar, but also of the fact that it's also a tracking device. So that's one sort of story we got going on. The other story is that Hybis, representing Demon World 3 and King Kadan, has arrived on Earth and meets Goku, Vegeta, Bulma, and Kibito. So at long last, he's going to pick them up and bring them into the Demon Realm so we can finally have the whole crew there. Again, I'm happy that happened, but I still feel like the last three episodes, including this one from five to seven, could have been squeezed together a bit better, and they could have been there a bit sooner. That's just sort of me, you can call it nitpicking, I call it just being critical and just saying, okay, this could have been done in a different way. I don't think the collar storyline is all that interesting, to be honest with you. And now looking back, that demonstration that Goku gave against King Kadan's forces in episode 5, and then the fight with Glorio in episode 6, while I did enjoy those sequences, they were fun to watch, you could have eliminated one or cut them down, or maybe even had Glorio and Goku spar in front of the king, and you kill two birds with one stone. But remember... This show is being supervised or was being supervised by Toriyama himself as far as how the scripts go, unlike the other Dragon Ball shows of yesteryear. So this is probably the closest you're going to get to how he wanted things to play out. That doesn't necessarily mean it's automatically going to be good, but at least we can't sit here and say, well, Toei added this or Toyo Taro or whomever added that and this, you know, no, this is approved by Toriyama. Toriyama is checking off on this pacing. 
they spend a lot of time in this episode with the military police sort of searching the ship and looking for stuff. And and you have to understand, if this show, if Dragon Ball Daima was going to be, let's say, 60 episodes or 50 episodes, this type of pacing makes sense. It is not that long. So that's kind of where my issue stem. There was action in this episode. There was a little bit of comedy. The comedy was mostly uh, Goku eating these little like black balls that are kind of like Senzu's. I don't know if you guys remember, but when Senzu beans were first introduced, the whole thing behind them is that they could basically stop your hunger. You stop being hungry for X amount of time. I don't remember the exact amount of time yet, but you basically don't have to eat again. And that's kind of how these things work is that Goku's eating them just getting full. We see his stomach like kind of sticking out like he looks like he's pregnant. It's the same gag we saw in episode one when adult Goku's stomach stuck out before he sparred with Vegeta. So the action comes in the form of not Goku actually in this episode, but Shin and Glory are the ones that kind of get a lot of the fighting here. Uh, as I mentioned, the collar is a tracking device, and they've been the, the military police, the same guys that stopped them a few episodes ago, are have been like secretly following them, and they pull them over. It's it's almost like a damn like you're getting pulled over by the cops here, and of course, as you know in Dragon Ball, one thing leads to another. And fists are thrown. So Goku at one point is like, why don't we just like beat him up? Let's just beat him up. Typical, you know, easy. Let's just do the fastest point from A to B. Let's just beat him up. And we find out that, well, here's the problem. If they become fugitives and enemies of the demon realm, they won't be allowed to use warp. And they need warp to go in between the realms as well as to get out into the outside world. Now, again, the show has not really established all the rules yet because there was some implication in the early episodes that, you know, that they weren't supposed to be leaving the demon realm, Goma and them, and we still don't know and we may never really know where Warp came from, who put him in charge. It's almost like, you know, what's the origin of the Omni King? You know, these are things that Toriyama just never really goes into. They're just there. So... Um, the rules about Warp and the Demon Realm have not been really established, especially since Goma himself is basically a dictator. And is Warp okay with that? Does Warp work for Goma? Not really, not based on what was said in the first episode. So these are things that will probably never really get explained, even though I wish they would. I highly doubt it, just because it's the way things are. So one of the things that we saw in this episode for the first time in Daima has been Goku using teleportation, known in Japan as instantaneous movement slash instant transmission for the English dub viewers. So at one point he's in the ship and they're sort of talking to the guards and then when they're about to go search the ship, he teleports out and hides, you know, like in these like sort of these, these plants, among these plants. But then what they discover, or not discover, what they suspect and realize is that Pansy was the mass Majin that threw the uh, wasabi bomb in episode 5, and that's where one thing kind of escalates, you know. Again, all of this, like, searching through the ship stuff could have been done a lot faster. So the ship that they got from the king ends up getting destroyed, but now they can hijack the ship from the military police, and... You know, it, it, that is something that I find kind of goofy and funny is that this is now like the third ship that they've used. They've had to keep changing ships out because one got stolen, one got destroyed. It's like, <laughs> it, it's roadblocks. Then they go more into the collars, which again, they could have sped through this faster as well, where Shin kind of determines that the collar is made of kachin metal, which is the same metal that we actually saw in both Dragon Ball Z and Super. Remember, the um, the big sort of uh, cube that is thrown at Gohan when he's training with the Z sword was said to be made of Kachin metal, and that's what snapped the sword and allowed the old Kai to be released from within. And so the extra lore dump here is that we find out that that metal is from Demon World 2, the home of the Glins. And it's also material that's used to power the ships, that, that's necessary to power the, uh, the spaceships. And Supreme Kai also surmises that he believes that Dr. Arinsu, his sister, was the one that had the idea and implemented that collar system even before Goma took over. This has been something they've been doing for a while here. And then we also find out the Supreme Kai's real name. 
Yes, I thought it was Shin because not only did Dragon Ball Z introduce him as that in the tournament, that could have been just a euphemism or a uh, you know an alter ego, but also in Dragon Ball Super, he's referred to, sh to as Shin, but she's like, no, 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 that's your name outside of here, in the outside world. What's your birth name? So in other words, Shin is not the name he was given at birth. We find out it's Dahade. So that's new. My guess is that when he eventually got the position of being the Kaioshin, the Supreme Kai, he just kind of got rid of his birth name or stopped being referred to as that. Or there could be a deeper story that hasn't been revealed yet. Either way, I don't think it's all that interesting. It's just, again, extra lore, which I appreciate, but let's get this plot going. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully you understand where I'm coming from here. So speaking of Supreme Kai and, and Kaioshin, he uses his magic to break the collar. Because he can do that. Now they can't be tracked and they can go to the Tamagami without having to worry about being interrupted. Which is great because that makes the audience, aka us, a bit happier. That we don't have to see these goon fights as much anymore and we're going to get to a real fight now. And literally, like, right after this, they end up in the location of Tamagami 3. Like, right there, they're there. And I'm just thinking, well, uh... I'm happy, again, mixed opinions. I'm happy that we're finally at the Tamagami 3, but you could have gotten there earlier in the episode, right? I mean, they could have gone into the Shin thing when they get to Demon World 2, but whatever. We are at the Tamagami. So Tamagami number 3 is there, and he's just sort of like the one we saw in the first episode, just guarding the Dragon Ball. He's almost like um, very stoic. You know, he's obviously supposed to be like sort of this artificial creation i'm not going to say he's an android or a cyborg it's probably something a bit more magical since he was created by a namekian presumably but um he's just there and he resembles a lot of toriyama's robot designs from other things like chrono trigger and and things of that nature and they make it clear that he has never lost a fight no one's been able to take the demon dragon ball from him and that of course whets goku's appetite but in a literal way, because he literally says he wants to eat first. So they go to this little restaurant, and at this point, I'm almost pulling my hair out because I'm being honest with y'all, man. I, I've been very fair with this. I thought we were done with the side quests. I thought we were done with going to villages. I, I get what they're doing here. They're trying to sort of build up the Tamagami, but I think it's been built up enough. Goku asks, like, the restaurant guy, he's like, uh... So, uh, how do you actually challenge this thing? Because he's, he's asking if they're going to do it. There's a village next to the Tamagami, and, or around him, and um, the guy just says, just go up to him. Just challenge him. That's it. <laughs> All right. Goku would have done that anyways. We also find out from Pansy that Deborah could not beat the Tamagami either. And uh, that kind of isn't that big of a deal because if you go back to the Majin Buu saga... Goku didn't really think much of Deborah. Same thing with Vegeta. At that point in the series, both Goku and Vegeta were way beyond Deborah. So I don't think that that's necessarily the right way to power scale or approach this fight. Yes, Goku is in a new body, so to speak. You know, with a different, um, the gravity and the atmosphere is a little bit different because of his shorter frame and the Demon Realm's overall atmosphere. So maybe Goku is not going to be quite as effective as he was in the Buu Saga. This is me kind of thinking out loud here. But Goku is very quick to adapt. And either way, they'll figure it out. And I'm going to give you a prediction here in just a minute about what I think is going to happen. So they go up to Tamagami 3, he wakes up, he yells at them, he's got a giant hammer, Goku's like, yeah, I want to fight you. Meanwhile, Hybis, Vegeta, Piccolo, and Bulma have arrived in the Demon Realm. So the challenge has been made and the fight will begin next week. Now, in the next episode preview, usually they're about 5 seconds. This one was a bit longer, it felt more like 15-20 seconds, and we saw more of the next episode, including we're going to catch up with Goma, Dr. Orinsu, and Degasu. They're in the next episode preview. Goku is fighting the Tamagami first in base, but I'm going to guess he's going to use, he's going to start with base to kind of test things out a bit and then go into the Super Saiyan forms. My prediction, this is not a spoiler, it's a prediction. I think that Goku will have his hands full with Tamagami 3 for a little while. And I think that at one point, Vegeta and Piccolo are going to pop up and help him. So I do think that 
Next week, we're going to start with Goku versus Tamagami 3, and eventually Vegeta and Piccolo will show up to kind of give them aid. And what I'm excited about, too, is the fact that the fight's going to have weapons. Because we've got Tamagami 3 with the big-ass hammer and Goku with, of course, the Nioi bow, the power pole. So we're going to have some weapon combat besides just some hand-to-hand -hand combat. But, again, I must repeat what I've been saying earlier. This could have been done a bit faster. We could have gotten the beginning of the Goku-Tamagami fight in the last few minutes of this episode if they had gotten to it quicker. I'm glad we're here, but... If I'm being critical and giving a critical eye, there could have been more effective ways to get here. Either way, next week is the one to look forward to. We're going to actually have a fight that's not a sparring match or an exhibition. It's going to actually be a battle for the Demonic Dragon Ball. So stay tuned for my video tonight as well as tomorrow, the breakdown of this episode, Easter eggs and things you may have missed, not to mention that um, I'll be live on Sunday discussing this episode on the Super Magic Show and talking about old school Dragon Ball Z video games with Ryan Molina. Come hang out and I look forward to seeing you guys real soon. Take care.